Hello, I'm Nadira Hira, your MC for this year's SDG Global Festival of Action. And I'm so pleased to be presenting one of our very special Turning Point Dialogues. On the heels of a year full of challenges, a global pandemic marked by economic, political, and social turmoil, we've seen dramatic shifts in how we think about living and earning, consuming and producing. Things that were deemed too ambitious or expensive even to entertain before, now seem not just doable, but downright imperative. Which means that this incredibly difficult moment may also be a potentially unparalleled opportunity to build a more just and sustainable society. So how? How do we, together, make this a true turning point for people and for planet? Here to talk about it with us is French Ambassador at Large and Secretary General of the Generation Equality Forum, the largest international summit for women's rights since the 1995 Forum in Beijing, where US First Lady Hillary Clinton famously declared, women's rights are human rights. Welcome, Delphine O. Oh. Hi, Nadira. Good to be with you. Thank you so much for being with us. And let's just jump in. Thinking about the power and possibility and really the necessity of this moment, we know 2021 is gonna be a big year for gender equality. Can you tell us about the plans for the upcoming Generation Equality Forum? And how do you see this global gathering helping us to ha harness the opportunity of this moment so we really can make this a turning point? Well, you know, 2020 was actually supposed to be the turning point for gender equality. We were celebrating the 25th anniversary of Beijing, the 20th anniversary of Women, Peace and Security, but we had to postpone to 2021. So how is the Generation Equality Forum going to be a turning point? Well, the fact that we're gathering even virtually is an incredible turning point. 25 years without a world conference on women's rights and gender equality. It's incredible that we managed to bring together member states, international organizations, civil society, youth, private sector, all coming together. The second thing is we want to look back, but we also want to look forward. So we're gonna look at the progress, but also regression we've experienced in gender equality in the past 25 years. But more importantly, we're going to set a concrete program for action with our six coalition of actions on gender equality, gender based violence, economic empowerment, women and climate and so on. And we're going to bring together a variety of stakeholders who have never been working together. And this is a real turning point. It's, an, it's incredible to hear. And it's also clear that we need concrete, ambitious, real transformative action to achieve this progress that we're talking about on all these issues, but particularly on gender equality. So what major shifts do you think need to happen on both a systemic and an individual level for us to actually get there? On the systemic level, what I just said is very important. Back 25 years ago, member states were doing their own thing. International organizations were doing their own mm -hmm. thing. Civil society won on, on, on the sidelines of the conference. The real shift happening is that everybody's working together for gender equality together. Even governments have understood that we need to bring civil society on board in the governance, in the design of what's gonna be the result of the Generation Equality Forum in the roadmap for actions, which will be presented in Mexico at the end of this month, uh, March 29th to March 31st, and then in Paris uh, from June 30th to July 2nd. This is the first major shift. The second shift, which is very personal to me, is that I really hope that with the Generation Equality Forum, girls and women can finally have bodily autonomy, can finally have the freedom to design freely over their bodies, their sexuality, um, to, to, through comprehensive sexual education, to access to contraception, access to abortion, what we call sexual and reproductive health and rights. I do very much hope that this will be a major shift so that we can talk openly and very freely about this fundamental choice and freedom of women. Your energy is incredible. And I know it mirrors the energy of so many people around the world who feel exactly what you do. So I wonder if you could just reflect for a moment on what those people can do to support the movement. What can we do to today in this moment um, to take action and support the work that you and, and all the folks you've talked about are doing? 
Well, first register for the Mexico Forum and the France Forum. So the Mexico Forum is already open for registration at the end of this month, and then the Paris Forum will be at the end of June. Second, we launched on the International Women's Day just uh, a couple of days ago, uh, the Act for Equal campaign, which is gonna be the global campaign for generation equality. So you can join in every in any kind of uh, a way, you know, uh, on social media or uh, wherever you want uh, with the hashtag Act for Equal, and you can say I act for equal by doing this and that and I demand of my government of my internationalizations of my employer to also act for equal so this is really sort of a global citizen uh, campaign and mobilization and then third if you'd like to be active in the generation equality forum where there are many civil society organizations they're already involved in the governance of this forum we're working together with UN women Mexico um, and hundreds and hundreds of civil society organizations and youth organizations so you can look it up if there's uh, you know an organization close to you in your country in your region that you like to join and then join the conversation incredible so hashtag act for equal and where can people actually go to register um, so the Mexico Forum has its own platform. Uh, it's sorry for my Spanish uh, for generación igualdad. I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> and you then did a great the, job. <laughs> <laughs> and then the platform for the Paris Forum will be open um, in April. Uh, and you can find all the information on the UN Women website because UN Women is the official organizer of this uh, huge international conference. Amazing. Uh, I want to touch on a word that you used earlier that I think um, matters to a lot of us. You talked about regression and the fact that in 1995, all these incredible commitments were made. And 25 years later, there has been movement, certainly, but there's been regression. And there have also been things that haven't advanced as much as we would have hoped. And so I guess as you speak to the community here at the festival and around the world, what is what are your thoughts on how we avoid that over the next 25 years? How do we actually translate the commitments that we're finding now and the passion into true action so that we don't end up in a situation where we're having the same conversation down the road? Well, Beijing was very important. The reason why that is that 189 countries at that time, the entire United Nations came together and subscribed voluntarily to this platform for action. The only missing piece was that there was no accountability mechanism. And that's what you're saying, right? So 25 years down the road, we have uh, member states reporting, but we don't have actual mandatory commitments from the member states. What we did differently with the Generation Equality Forum, it's on a voluntary basis. It's open to member states, but also private sector, philanthropic foundations, civil society organizations, UN agencies, everybody can join, can make their own commitment. But once they make the commitment, they're going to be held accountable by the UN and by the international community and by civil society, because this commitment is going to be made in the open. And so we have a five year roadmap for all the commitments, which will be tracked uh, and, you know, very regularly along this five years. And we hope to regroup in five years from now and make sure that we have reached our goals. It's an amazing framing because it's opting in, but then also making good on that choice. Um, rather than approaching it in a punitive or negative way, which uh, really, again, shows in your energy and in everything that um, you guys have coalesced around this forum. So we are excited for that. <laughs> but before we let you go, um, I have to ask, you are obviously such an inspiring figure yourself, but it would be wonderful for our participants to hear what inspires you. So is there a person, a book, a podcast, a piece of art, a movement that moves you? Um, and can you share that with us? So many things, so many, you know, strong women around me uh, from all generations that inspire me. Um, I want to refer to the book by Michelle Obama, Becoming, that I do hope that, you know, your listeners have read or will read, um, not just because it's Michelle, <laughs> but also because I think she relates in, in really good transparency and honesty, what it is to be a strong woman, what it is to go through some personal challenges and what is this also to be married to somebody who's so famous and so strong. And I think she's very much an inspiration to many, many young girls in the US, but also in France and all over the world. And um, I do happen to teach also uh, a, a class on feminist foreign policy. And I have to say that my students, the young generation inspire me a lot because they challenge me every day. And I'm very happy, you know, that this young generation, this more radical feminist generation is, is really coming to the fore and speaking out uh, what they have to say. And it's actually so inspiring too, because while they are radical feminists, I almost see it as a more holistic approach to what it means to be a woman, which is exactly what Michelle 
embodies as well. And if I may be so bold, it seems clear that you embody too. So <laughs> thank, thank you. you thank You're you. being too kind. <laughs> but it's true from your students to, the, to Michelle Obama and to you, we are so grateful to have you in this conversation. So thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Delphine O. We'll see you at the Generation Equality Forum and stay tuned for more from the SDG Global Festival of Action. Thank you.